So you're thinking about getting an electric vehicle, but you don't have six figures to spend on your electric vehicle? We've got the solution just for you. Hey everybody, it's Peter, and we are here at Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals to talk about the Piaggio One scooter. This is an electric scooter. Now hear me out. You may be thinking, hey, this isn't what I had in mind for an electric vehicle, but think about your gas vehicle. Where is it the least efficient? In town. This thing is fantastic in town, and this is not like a bicycle style scooter. You see those around everywhere. This is more of the equivalent to a 50cc scooter. So in many areas, you don't need a full motorcycle license to ride it, but you do have essentially a full motorcycle. So let's talk about what this actually is and how you can use it. First of all, it's a Piaggio. Piaggio is a brand that is going to give you quality. A lot of these scooter looking things are very low quality, cheap plastics, cheap feeling everywhere. This is quality absolutely everywhere. And what it's gonna give you is the ability to get around town and have fun on silent, pure electric power. Now a benefit of going with an electric vehicle over a gas scooter is no maintenance. So in a vehicle like this, there's no oil changes, there's no fuel, it can charge at home. We're gonna show you all the details about it right now. The first thing I wanna show you is the key fob. Very similar to a Tesla key fob. It looks like a car, I'm not sure why, but it is very practical. And the way you start this is you can unlock it by pressing that. I don't know if you heard the beep on that, but it makes a beep. You can lock it there and it also has, or sorry, it also has a panic alarm on the bottom there. Now there is a physical key in here. It does come with physical keys as well. You don't really need to use those. So let's show you some of the practicality that comes with a Piaggio scooter. We'll unlock it here first. We'll come around to the key, we turn the key to on. Now, I'm gonna turn it off for a second and I'm gonna pop this seat. Down here, you can stick at least a half face helmet, maybe a full face helmet, but let me show you what's inside here. Inside the storage compartment is one of the most useful features. You've got the battery pack right here, which you can unplug from here, lift out of there. It's not the lightest thing in the world, but you can lift it out. And I think that's super important for people who maybe don't have a garage. If you didn't have a garage, you could take it out, take it to your office, take it to your home, leave this sitting outside and charge this either from the vehicle, which you can do, or you could charge this inside, which is a really great idea. Charging a vehicle like this from inside your house means that you don't need a garage. You can just put a cover over it, keep it out in the rain, no big deal. And frankly, it's waterproof. So if you didn't have a cover for it, it'll still handle the elements. Now, let's talk about some of the features of this. We're gonna talk about some storage features here. We're gonna talk about just general sizing. First of all, I'm about six feet tall and I fit quite comfortably on this. You can fit a second passenger back here. We'll show you how the foot pegs work in a second, but even just on my own, it's completely comfortable. Let's show you some more features up close. Starting up close, again, we showed you the key fob earlier. Let's show it to you again. We're gonna press this button. You're gonna maybe hear a beep. I've got, I'm wearing a microphone that's not on the vehicle, but we're gonna press that button there. The vehicle does beep, and then you can turn it to the on position. Once you turn it on, the dash lights up. Now in the camera, there's gonna be some glare on there. I find when I'm driving it, glare is just not an issue. Sometimes it's harder to film that with the glare. And again, the flickering that you're seeing of the zero, this is an LED display and they can flicker a little bit on camera. They don't flicker in real life. But let's look at some of the features here. First of all, you have a regular handlebar. That means you can mount accessories. If you wanted to mount a phone mount there and have your GPS included, you could do that. And what's handy is if you do do that, you have a USB port right there to keep your phone charged. You do have the uh, key there that, so again, that's not the key, but it functions like a key there. It can pop the seat, it can lock the steering, it can do all kinds of things. And this little hook right here is a little grocery bag. And if you've never driven around on a scooter, you can keep things between your legs uh, very easily, groceries and other things, but you also have a little grocery bag that can keep between your knees as you're driving in addition to that under seat storage. Now let's take a look at some of the controls. On the left side controls, very typical motorcycle stuff. You have your high beam and low beam. Headlights, of course, are always on on a motorcycle. You've got your signal lights. These are LED signals. We'll show you them to you in a second. You can press the uh, cancel right there. And again, these are not cheap switch gear. This is Piaggio stuff, so you get really high quality stuff. And you have a little horn down here. <coughs> Quite loud for a scooter, which is what you want. The other side of the horn button is a little M button. I don't know if you can quite read it from the angle we're on. And that changes various things in your display. We'll show you the display in one second. Let's switch to the other handlebar. Two of the key features I wanna point out here, actually three of the key features I wanna point out, you do have a kill switch, just like you would have on a regular motorcycle, which uh, disables it, does not allow it to drive. Down here, you have a hazard light which is really important on a 50cc type scooter. Again, this isn't 50cc, it's electric, but on a vehicle like this where the top speed is around 60 kilometers an hour or so, 
you want to make sure that if you get stuck on a road where you're a little too quick, you can just make sure that people know that you're going a little slower than they are. And then down here, you can switch through your drive modes, which are interesting. There are sport and eco and a reverse gear. I don't think you, most people would need a reverse gear, but if you're pushing this up a hill backwards, super helpful to have. So we'll show you how those work right now. Taking a look at the digital dash, again, the information up top right around there is your range. At this point, it's 43 kilometers. This can vary based on how we drive it and all kinds of other things. So again, anytime you're looking at an EV on a video, the range number in the video can usually vary, depends on people, how, how they're driving. Uh, so look at the specs rather than looking at the video. You've got temperature upside, it's 24 degrees outside. You've got uh, the clock over on the right side, 90% battery life on this uh, vehicle right now, and it is in sport mode. In North America, you're going to be driving in sport mode. Eco mode limits it. Uh, I don't remember the exact spec, but it seems to be around that 30-ish kilometers an hour, almost e-bike speed. Uh, the point of buying this is to get a little quicker than that, and you're gonna drive it in sport mode. But let's show you how to adjust that sport mode and put it into reverse mode. So on the right side handlebar, I'm gonna hit that mode button, but I have to put my hand on the, um, hold it down here for a second. And then it goes to eco there. I'm gonna tap that and now I'm in, oops, hold it. So I'll hold it in sport mode, just to put it back in sport mode there. And then I'm gonna switch it over to eco mode, hold it down in uh, eco mode and it switches to eco mode. And same thing with reverse. Gonna hold it down there and it goes into the reverse mode. Once you're in reverse, I don't know if you can hear it. You can see there's a little icon up there which has a little speaker. It is currently beeping, not super loud, but it does allow you to know that it is coming backwards, which is very EV. Uh, familiar to people with EVs. So we're gonna go back to the sport mode here, leave it in there. I'm gonna show you what the dash does when you're driving. Now again, it's on the center stand. I don't recommend doing this, but let me just show you what the dash looks like when you're driving. So give it a little bit of throttle and you can see on the right side, you can see that power outage and then you can see it kind of builds on the bottom. So again, we're just gonna hit the brakes again here. We'll talk about brakes in a second. Give it a little bit of throttle here and you can see power builds. And when I release the throttle, power regenerates. This is a vehicle with regenerative braking, so it does recapture some energy when you let off the throttle. Again, the wheel spins, it shows you in the speedometer right there. Now let's talk about the braking system. While we're looking at the front brakes, let's talk about the front suspension geometry. This is very Vespa-like. It's a trailing link suspension. It helps with a little bit of anti-dive, helps with a little bit of uh, just overall control. And as you can tell, it's a beefier suspension than what you would have on like a bicycle style scooter. You do still have 10 inch wheels. 10 inch wheels are on the smaller side. They're all you need for 50cc. That also helps with the handling, makes it really direct, uh, more fun to drive. And if you've ever driven a vehicle uh, like this, small wheels can make a slower vehicle still very, very fun to drive. Now let's look at the two brake lines down here. That's because when I press my left side brake, there is a linked braking system that links both the front and rear wheels together. If you've ever driven a motorcycle or a scooter, usually your uh, front and rear brakes are separate, but this is a more advanced system. So if I pushed my right side lever, that would just be the front wheel. That's what the one uh, line is for, but it does link the brakes when you press your left side lever, which is your rear brakes and your front brakes. So it does give you more control in wet environments, in emergency environments, uh, just so you're not locking up the wheel, you're balancing your braking out uh, very well. Let's take a look at the lighting on this vehicle now. LED lighting can be a little bit hard to film, but you can see you kind of got these daytime running lights running along here. This looks really sharp in person and you've got them down there. Now, some scooters put the light up here. There's pros and cons to each. If you had it up here, when you turn the steering wheel, it could turn with you. What you have when it's down here is there's a consistent light. Even if you're wiggling this around at a, steer, at a stoplight, this is staying consistently in front of you. So I like them here, but again, it really doesn't matter. That's just one of the benefits. When I hit the high beam switch, you'll see it up here. While we're taking a look at this, let's take a look at the signal lights as well. we'll turn on just the left side signal, just the right side signal, and let's do that hazard lighting as well, which just again, really makes, draws some attention to the vehicle. Again, LED lights don't show perfectly on camera, but these are nice, bright, instant on, instant off lights, so they really do draw your attention, which is what you want on a smaller scooter. The rear lighting looks really cool again in person. It has this nice stylish, sleek kind of style over here. That's kind of a very pointy edge. When you tap the brakes here though, that whole area lights up. So you have lighting from the side, from the back, from the other side. And that's really, again, important for safety. We've got really good visibility down there and it's just cool to look at. It draws your attention with that LED feature. Again, if we turn the uh, hazard lights on again, you've got those hazard lights down low and this is full LED lighting, an LED light on your plate as well. Plates, of course, are reflective, so that gives you some extra visibility as well. Let's take a look at the rear motor suspension area and then we'll move on. 
What I love about this is again, something that doesn't show up in sort of all the pictures and it won't show up great in the video. You've got these sort of holes through here that adds strength, it makes it lightweight, it adds styling, it looks super cool. These right here are the rear passenger foot pegs. They just slide in like that, slide out like that. So again, you can take that rear passenger, they have a place to put their feet, it's legal to take them. In here, there's an orange line behind, orange lines on an electric vehicle, they're high voltage lines and that runs to the motor, which has a nice full cover there for the fender, really protects everything from getting dirty out here. So you can drive this in all weather, typical suspension that you'd find on a scooter, uh, kind of laid back, just a, a good geometry there, good spread there, and a long swing arm. That's kind of what you want on a vehicle, just to give you good stability, good uh, travel and suspension, and good control. You also have the center stand here, which allows you to set it upright. Even in the wind, it stays very good. One cool thing down here is there's a little hook down here. If you're leaving this outside your apartment or at your house or your office, you can lock it up with a bike lock just through there onto a bike lock area. And again, scooters don't have to park in all of the same parking spots as cars in cities. They can park up on sidewalks, up in other areas where uh, bicycles go. And because of the compact size of this, it's really not going to be looked upon as something other than, you know, really a larger bicycle. But again, it is more speed, more fun, more power, and certainly more quality. So that's a brief overview of the Piaggio One electric scooter. If you wanna know up-to-date pricing and more, there's a link in the description to Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals. They'll have everything on their website, including what's in stock. You can reach out to them, you can connect with them. And what are we doing on this channel? Well, we're gonna have videos like this. If you wanna know more about it, do a driving video, other types of things, we're gonna be able to have that on this channel. We're gonna come back to these vehicles over and over again. So if you have questions, let me know in the comments below and we'll continue to answer your questions in future videos and in those comments, and again, Thanks to Jim Gilbert, who allows us to have full access to their vehicle line so we can put daily videos up of Kawasaki, Piaggio, Pedego e-bikes, Vespa scooters, all kinds of cars, used cars, Tesla vehicles, and more. Thanks everybody for watching. Hit the subscribe button if you're interested. And again, thanks to everyone who lets us have access to these vehicles.